Alright, well, it has been a while since I have done anything regarding my steampunk work. Um, my sister-in-law actually made me very much aware that we're already 25% of the way to next year's Otakon. So I figured, hey, you know, I should probably start working on my stuff a little bit more. Well, before I actually start working on anything, I need to go ahead and document what I've already done. Um, I'd say that I've been busy since the last post, but um, that's not 100% true because I did do a lot of work, but then I ended up taking a really big break. So, let's see where we are right now. First off, I mentioned that I was going to use a Rust-Oleum paint and primer combination uh, with the color choosed at, or with the color chosen as oil rubbed bronze. Now, I did go ahead and do that. That's actually this right here in case that anybody likes the color of the gun. It's Rust-Oleum Universal Advanced Formula Metallic Paint and Primer in one. Says that it can be used on any surface, wood, metal, plastic, masonry, and it comes out as oil rubbed bronze. Now, I really like the effect of that color. I picked that can up for, you know, maybe like six or seven dollars at a Lowe's, and uh, that's what the base coat is uh, of the gun. Um, after I separated it into the parts that I showcased in my last, uh, my last portion of this video series, I went ahead and laid everything down on pieces of cardboard. I had a lot of boxes from unpacking. Um, just laid everything down on a bal uh, laid everything down on a balcony. And what ended up happening was, uh, I just pretty much made sure to get an even coat all around on the, uh, got an even coat on everything, left it out there for probably 24 hours, put another coating on it, and, um, put another coating on it, and, uh, just kind of left it at that. Um, after that was done, and I made sure that, you know, there weren't any uh, there weren't any uneven, you know, coats on it, or, you know, j just generally paying attention to detail. Um, I'd say that the whole process probably took, like, maybe two or three days, mainly because I really, really wanted to make sure that everything was dry before bringing it inside and, and dealing with that. So, after everything was dry, I brought it in, and I eventually got around to, uh, doing what I... I call it the antiquing process. I don't know if there's an actual term for it, but that's what I'm going to call it. I chose this right here, which I picked up from a... I picked this up from Hobby Lobby, which is where I'm getting a lot of my stuff. This is Anita's All-Purpose Metallic Craft Paint. It's a permanent acrylic paint, and the number, if anybody likes, is 11408 Bronze. This whole bottle, uh, eight uh, fluid ounces, I've used barely nothing of that. And uh, the uh, technique that I used is actually very simple. Uh, taking a piece of cardboard, I put a dab of that on there. And I used a basic sponge brush. You can pick up a five pack of these at like a Hobby Lobby or any hobby shop for probably like I don't know, like two or three dollars or something for like five of them. They're very, very cheap and um, very flexible. And all that you want to do is actually once you've got that, uh, once you've got that um, little dab of paint on the on the cardboard, you're just gonna basically do this technique. You're just gonna kind of dab it in there dry. You don't want any water. You want to do a dry brush. And um, you're going to wipe it as clean as possible as you, as you can. Then you take the gun, or whatever you're doing, and as you can see, uh, I'm going to show you that. That is the technique that comes out from this. As you can see, uh, everything on there has been, has been attacked. Um, just so I'll hold that up there for a little bit so you guys can actually see all of the color 
that's in there. And that is nothing more than a combination of the oil-rubbed bronze and the antiquing technique that I told you about. And on this side, of course. And, uh, I think... Personally, I think that that gives it a very nice color. It makes it look very old, makes it look very... Very steampunk, very... Very... What I, it, it definitely fits the feel of what I was trying to go for. And this was really easy to do. I mean, after it's on here, you just essentially... I, I just did this. I mean, I, like, literally did not have any type of planning. You just kind of, wherever you think that you should smack it with the paint, you just smack it with the paint. You just get it in in all the little things, and you just... You don't want to put it on there heavy, but, uh... But you do want to get it on basically everything, as you, as you can tell. I've kind of went over that. And I let that dry for, you know, like 24 hours just because that, that's what I do. I'd rather give it a full 24 hours so that I don't have to worry about anything. And um, that's pretty much it at this point. I mean, it, it, took, a f you know, it took a few days because of me being patient with, you know, letting everything dry. Because you don't want to mix wet paints or else you're going to get, like, colors that you don't want. Unless if, you know, you do want to mix paints and get odd colors. But with spray paint and acrylic being two different types of, you know, two different types of paint, you, you probably don't want to be handling something that's still wet spray paint and trying to do an antiquing thing on there. Especially because one's wet and the other's a dry brush technique anyway. So, so I advise just, you know, being patient and trying to get that done. Um, yet again, that's the gun. That is what it looks like. Um, the bad news is that I had designed a thing up here for the pin to pull back, but actually another piece inside during the process ended up snapping, so mine does not fire anymore. Mine is completely non-functional, but that thing I was telling you about beforehand... Uh, in the other video about this actually falling all the way out. See, beforehand, on a regular Maverick, it only comes out like maybe like that. But this one drops all the way down like an actual revolver, and I, I think that that effect's really, really cool. It also helps you with the painting process with the antiquing of actually being able to just flip that out and everything. So mine's completely non-functional. Kind of sad. I really wanted it to still be able to shoot the nerf darts and everything. But, um... But it's okay. And, uh, I think it's coming along. It's, uh... I did do one thing kind of different. The screws that were in here, I actually replaced. Uh, you'll see I used... Uh, I just picked up some, like, gold screws from Lowe's, and, uh, I put nuts on them, just to have them stand out. I've got the one there, 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 up the top, down here, down here, and I actually used the bronze acrylic paint to kind of make them stand out a little bit, so, like, I dabbed on them. Now, the ones up at the top, those didn't want to actually go all the way in. I guess I could have got longer screws, but just having them a little bit different at the top like that's also kind of cool. I mean, it, it when it comes to bolts and screws and stuff, you, you can kind of switch out for whatever you want. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the millimeters are on those screws. I just basically took the ones from the, uh, from the Nerf gun itself, took them in and just kind of like, you know, matched up and just got them a little bit longer so that I could put nuts on them. But, um, next video, this should probably be finished. I'm going to try to make this a three-part thing. Because I, I really don't have too much that I want to add on there because I don't want it to have a bunch of extra kibble that it doesn't need. And, you know, I don't want to go into the community and people just label me as a cog slapper, so... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hope to be able to sum this up and start working on, you know, other parts of my costume soon. And we'll see those as they come along. So, thanks for watching. Hope this one gets as many views as the other did. Alright, bye.